Hi, we're going to talk about the halfway point, and this is for titrations. Um, a halfway point really is our ideal buffering region. It is the best buffer that we can have. Um, now, the halfway point you'll see in different textbooks is called different things, actually a number of items. So I wanna give you these other words just in case you switch chemistry classes and a different teacher or a different um, book is using a different term, you'll know, oh, this is all the same thing. Um, so the halfway point can also be referred to as the half equivalence point. It's also called the midpoint or it's called the ideal buffer. Now let me sh show you on a titration graph where this lies. Um, so here I have my titration curve. I actually am using it for this example that I might work for you. We're going to have acetic acid. We're going to start right here. It will be a 0.1 molar and we have 20 mils. So that's what you would have in the Erlenmeyer flask. I have 20 mils of this 0.1 molar um, acetic acid, okay? Um, now, down here at the titrant, so that's going to be what's in the burette. I'm going to have this 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. And I'm going to use that because it's going to go drip, 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 drip and titrate um, this acid, okay? Now, the equivalence point, we've spent a lot of time on that. Um, that is the very, very beautiful spot where the moles, so important, moles, not molarity, moles of the hydrogen, moles of the acid equal the moles of the hydroxide. That is your equivalence point. Now, the halfway point is when you're halfway from your initial to the equivalence point. That's where you get these terms like half equivalence or halfway to the equivalence point. Midpoint, right in the middle um, between initial and equivalence. Ideal buffer, you'll see why we call it the ideal buffer in just a second. Um, so the halfway point happens right in the middle from um, the beginning of the titration until we hit the equivalence point. So this equivalence point, I know that we hit the equivalence point at 20 mils. Notice this is the mils of the titrant. So it's what's in the burette. I'm going to deliver 20 mils. So the halfway point is going to be 10. It's just half of that volume. So right here, it's 10 mils. You pull that up. Now the halfway point I labeled and I put it in a green box for you to highlight it. Um, it's really special. The pH at the halfway point equals the pKa. And I'll show you why um, on that as well. So um, let's kind of look at the nitty gritty and, and the backstory, if you will, of halfway point. So here's what's so significant of the halfway point. The acid equals the conjugate base. Um, now watch my video on buffers if you have questions on this. You can either look at it for moles of acid um, equal moles of conjugate base, or you could look at it as concentration of acid equals concentration of conjugate base. Um, but the big deal is the acid and the conjugate base, that is a pair that we use in buffers, the acid with its um, relative conjugate base. When those are equal, you're right there. You're at that beautiful halfway point where we've delivered half the mils of the titrant to the analyte, this acid right here. Um, so big, big takeaway. When you're at that halfway, when you're right in between, that means that you are at half the volume. So pause with me a second. Let's pretend that it actually took 50 mils. It took me 50 mils to get to the equivalence point. Well, you wanna know what the halfway point is? Divide that in half. It would be 25 mils. And it's at 25 mils that the pH will equal the pKa for that solution at that moment. Um, now here's the reason why, and it's Henderson-Hasselbalch. Um, this equation beautifully illustrates why pH equals pKa. Um, go to my acid-base equilibrium playlist and you can watch the video on Henderson-Hasselbalch if you have questions on that. Here's my formula for Henderson-Hasselbalch. We have pH equals pKa plus the log of the conjugate base divided by the concentration of the acid. Now, remember, you can use concentrations here or you can use moles because they have the same volume. The volume cancels out, so you can use molarity or moles. Um, now, when these are equal, okay, I don't care what the numbers are, but when these are equal, look what you get. A number divided by the same number is one. Log of one is always big fat zero. So when the acid and the conjugate base equal each other, that whole function becomes zero, which means what? Oh, pH equals pKa. So when the acid and conjugate base are equal, we get the halfway point, that's gone, pH equals pKa. Now I made a, a note just to make sure it was super explicit, a reminder that um, half the volume of the titrant um, is used to reach 
the equivalent or is um, at the uh, halfway point. So half of the volume of the titrant to reach the equivalence point. So here's all of my volume to reach equivalence, 10. So halfway point is half of that is 10, excuse me, 20 mils to get to equivalence point. So half of that is going to be the 10 mils. Um, said that several times, just wanted to write it down so you understood it. Um, now, I told you that one of our names for this special area is ideal buffer. And it's because this is an excellent buffer. You're going to have the maximum number of um, your conjugate base compared to the maximum number of the acid. Um, so it's considered a really, really good buffer when you're at that perfect equal acid to the conjugate base. Now, I want to do a problem for you. Um, so you can see um, using initial and final moles, how you will identify. Maybe you don't have this graph in front of you. Um, how you could identify just by given, uh, being given a problem. Oh yeah, I'm at the halfway point. Um, so I set up this problem for us. We are going to have um, 20 mils of a 0.1 molar acetic acid. So I have that in my um, Erlenmeyer flask. So I'd have this right here, my flask. I've got my 20 mils, okay, right there. And then we're going to have our burette, and that has the NaOH in it, okay? Um, and the NaOH is a 0 0.1 molar. The acid is 0, 0 0.1 molar. Um, so in this problem, we are going to say that we add 10 mils. I'm going to add 10 mils of the 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. And I want to know what is the pH, what's the pH? Um, so let's go ahead and figure out our moles. Um, recall that when, when we have an acid plus a base, okay, so this isn't an acid or base, base plus water. This is an acid plus a base. You always have to do initial final moles. So we're going to find the moles of the acid and the moles of the base. So let's start with our base. Since they're saying we're going to put 10 mils, I'm going to deliver 10 mils of sodium hydroxide into that flask um, to interact with the acid. Okay, so I've got 0.1 mole per liter and now this is the sodium hydroxide i'm going to go ahead and drop that sodium remember sodium hydroxide is a strong base 100 percent dissociates and the sodium is a neutral ion it doesn't impact the ph so that's going to be a spectator ion i'm going to go ahead and drop that right now for every one mole of sodium hydroxide i have one mole of just hydroxide so 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide is 0.1 molar hydroxide just a little reminder there um, now we have 10 mils, so if I uh, divide that by 1,000, it's going to be 0 0.01 liters. If we multiply that, liters cancels, and I'm going to get 0 0.001 moles of the sodium hydroxide. So let's go ahead and write that down. For my initial, I have 0 0.001 moles. Now let's see how many moles we have of the acid. So for my acid, we have 0.1 mole per liter of the acid, and that's the um, HC2H3O2. And we start with 20 mils. Um, so let's divide 20 mils by 1,000 to get it to liters. We get 0 0.02 liters. So my liters will cancel, multiply, and we get 0 0.002. So just 0 0.1 times 0 0.02 is 0 0.002 moles of my acid here, 2O2. Um, so let's go ahead and put this up here, 0 0.002 moles. Now, um, before I add this, before I deliver that sodium hydroxide in here, there's no acetate ion at zero. And of course, water, because it's a liquid, it does, it's not included in our equilibrium expression. So you just put a dashed line on that. Um, okay, so now we're going to look at the reaction. What's going to happen after this reacts? Um, so remember, this is a one-to-one -one molar ratio. If I have 0.01 moles, that is going to completely react with the 0.002 moles. So this will be consumed, will be zero. I'll have none of that left. And um, of this, I'm only going to use half of that. What you do is just subtract. 0.001 minus the 0.002, I will have remaining final 0 0.001, okay? So let me say that one more time how I did that. Um, I have my uh, 0.001 mole, and it's going to react. This is a bigger number, so this is my limiting reactant. Um, so I just subtract the amount that's going to be used in react right here. So subtract those two, and that's what's remaining is 0.001 moles right here. 
Um, if you wanted to do the actual stoichiometry, you could do the stoichiometry. This is just kind of a fast way of looking at it because it's a one to one molar ratio. You can just subtract that to get what you have right here. Um, now, let me, I, I, I have this feeling in my heart that some students might be confused seeing that. Let me show you um, if you're like, I still don't see how you did that. I'm going to take this 0 0.001 moles hydroxide and let's walk the bridge and see how much um, we're going to use as the acetic acid. So one mole of hydroxide reacts with one mole of the acetic acid, O2. And so when we multiply and divide, that means that we have 0 0.001 moles used. That's how much we're going to use of the acid. Well, if I begin with 0 0.002 moles, of the acid, this is my initial, initial. You just take what you begin with, subtract what you use, and that gives you the excess. That will be the excess moles of the acid, which is the 0 0.001. So if you need to write out the stoichiometry to think your way through it, great. Go ahead and do that, that's super. Um, as long as it's a one-to-one, -one, here's the trick, fast, dirty way to do it. Just subtract the smallest one from the bigger one, um, and that's going to give you what's left over. Okay, now we've got to finish this product side over here. Again, this is a one to one to one to one molar ratio. So for every one mole that we consume of hydroxide, it produces one mole of that acetate ion. So if we have, if we consume 0.001, that means we're going to produce 0.001 moles right there. Okay, so now we have what's left over. So picture this, you've got your 20 mils of that acid we're going to pour in 10 mils of the sodium hydroxide. And if we stop right there, what do we have in the flask? Well, I have 0.001 moles of the acid, acetic acid, and 0.001 moles of the acetate. Remember, this is consumed, completely reacted. So at this point, because I have the acid and the conjugate base, where do we go? We use henderson hasselbach We use the henderson hasselbach equation. So let's go ahead and plug in pH equals, oh, I have it written right here. All right, pKa. Um, the Ka on this is 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. Um, that is Ka for acetic acid. So let's do pKa is just the negative log of Ka. So negative log of Ka, which will be the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. Put that in your calculator. And the answer for pKa, when I do negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, is 4.74. Okay, 4.74. And you can just look up on um, acid ionization uh, tables. You can find what the Ka is of your acid. Um, okay, so there's pH equals pKa. That was 4.74 plus the log of the conjugate base, 0.001 divided by the acid, 0 0.001. 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.001 is one. Log of one is, woohoo, big fat zero. So pH equals 4.74, which is pKa. So I could come up here and write down that that pH equals 4.74, nice. Now, this is how I've seen questions asked in IB and in AP. Um, you'll be given a multiple choice question and three or four options that will say identify uh, the either the halfway point um, or it will say the ideal buffer, something, something like that. Um, AP won't use the term ideal buffer, um, but you will have words, one of these four sets of words um, that will clue you into, oh, I have to have the acid equal the conjugate base. I'm going to give you a trick, an easy way to do this. You just want the titrant to have half as many moles. Because if you have half as many moles as the acid, that means that you'll react half of it, and the other half is the product, which is the conjugate base. Um, so let me say that again. You'll see multiple choice questions where you have to identify the halfway point. You are looking for the titrant to be half the moles of the acid. Why? Because if you have half the moles, 
That means half of the acid will be reacted and the other half is converted, changed into that product, which is a conjugate base. Those numbers will be the same. Those numbers will be the same. Number one mistake that students make, they will pick a halfway point based on this. They'll say, oh, a halfway point, I guess I have to have both of these equal. And they'll choose the one that will give you the same number of moles. Now, if you have the same number of moles, oh, right here, same number of moles of the acid and the base, this is the acid, that's the base, that's equivalence point. We want same number of acid and conjugate base. So you have to have half the amount of this base right here, of that titrant. So you wanna keep those two things straight in your head. And if you need to rewind and listen to me say that one more time, um, the trick is you take half um, of the um, moles for the base to react with the full moles, moles of the acid, and that will give you equal numbers of acid and conjugate base, which is the halfway point, because log of one will go to zero, pH equals pKa. Once you wrap your brain around this, you practice it, you chew on it, um, it's pretty cool. It, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, good work. Have a wonderful day. If you need more help, I have a ton of videos on the acid-base playlist. Have a nice day. Thanks.